Good afternoon from the farmer's garden. I'm one of the farmers and I am out in the garden right now. Um, today's lesson, I just got distracted. Somehow we have a beautiful potato plant in completely the wrong spot. That just totally threw me off. I'm one of the farmers and I have ADD. Okay, um, I am out in our second planting of cold crops today and today we are doing an economics lesson. Um, so, the farmer is not real happy about this. Brandon is really not happy about it. He's like, I can't do it. I cannot do it. Um, and I'm not real happy about it either. Um, we're fixing to pull plants. Um, so our policy is, if it's started to grow, we're going to let it grow, uh, for the most part. So, whether that's eggs in the incubator that have already started to, uh, develop, and then we realize, shoot, chicks are not selling well we're not going to turn off the incubator halfway through we're going to let them go ahead and develop we're going to do what we can to sell them um or in this case plants normally once they're in the ground they're growing they get a chance to try to make um but we have a problem right now we are out of space for uh tomatoes and peppers specifically need more space right now and we have two groups of cold crops i'll show you both Cold crops take so long to develop. Um, so cold crops are uh, brassicas. So broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, um, Brussels sprouts. Those are the ones that we have growing right now. Um, collard greens fall in there. There's several. Um, so they take a very long time to develop. Um, our first planting has been in the ground for like two months, I think. The second planting has been in the ground for a month. I'm going to kind of pay attention to it. If there's something out here that I think is going to make pretty soon, I'll leave it alone. Um, but basically what it is is we've run out of time to wait for it. Um, the other problem with our cold crops is they're one harvest and done. So we get one head of cabbage, one head of broccoli, one head of cauliflower, whatever it is, and we're done. Um, now there are broccoli varieties that do make multiple heads, but the other heads are smaller and again, it takes a while to get to those. So we harvest once and then we're done. Um, so what we've run into is we've got these plants in here taking up valuable real estate uh, where we can't plant the things like the peppers and the tomatoes that we pick for an entire season. Um, so I'm going to show you both groups and then I'm going to start pulling. Uh, again, we don't like to pull plants once they're already in the ground. We like to give them that chance to go ahead and be profitable. Um, at this point, we've already lost the money for the seeds. We've already lost time on them. We've already lost fertilizer on them because these are in plastic mulch. And so it's harder to fertilize now. And they've already used a significant portion of the fertilizer that was here. Um, now there are ways to fertilize. We are working on some of those ways. Um, but there's already a financial cost in these that we're going to have to just eat by choosing to pull them out. Um, so I'm going to start by showing y'all our older section of cold crops and let y'all see how those are looking. Um, let me see if I can find... I don't think any of our tags are left out here. The ones that are left don't have dates left on them because they're faded off. Yeah, there's no dates on them. I'm pretty sure these have been out for two months now. Let me turn it around and let you see. So this is round one of cold crops. Um, so these are broccolis. You can see we are starting to get some broccoli heads. Uh, even once we start to see those heads, it's a little bit more time after that. So in theory, we could just be like, oh, we'll harvest all of these. It'll be fine. We'll have this space after we harvest and then we don't have to pull anything out. And that is an option. There's a nice broccoli head there. Um, but I'm gonna kind of explain why we're not just doing that. All right, so next is cabbage. And again, this whole section through here is safe. These are not getting pulled. So cabbages, they've been in the ground for two months already. We have big, beautiful plants, but we don't have heads yet. This one is starting to form a head. They're coming, but we haven't harvested anything off of this. We have cauliflowers over here. We're terrible with cauliflower. Don't judge our pink cauliflower. It tastes amazing. It looks terrible. Um, so these are getting close and we'll have this space and that's fine and dandy but it's not quite enough. Cilantros are done, which we knew that Saturday or Friday when we were picking. They've all bolted, so we knew they were done. Um, and that's fine. We're okay with that. We'll have that space. Uh, Brussels sprouts over here. Brussels sprouts take so long 
They're making sprouts. Uh, let's see if I can find some of them. Yeah, down in here. They are making sprouts, um, but they just take so long. So we need, we need this space back, which it's coming because we will harvest these. We may leave these Brussels sprouts all summer. Coal crops don't like the heat, so that probably won't work. But we did think about just leaving them as long as we can and seeing what we get. This is round two. This is what I'm going to be working on today. So these have been out for about a month. Um, we had some irrigation issues to work out, and so it took a little bit of time before we got to water them. But then with the irrigation and then the rain, they're doing great. Um, so like I might leave broccoli. The broccoli seems the furthest along, but none of this has heads in it yet. So maybe, I don't know. I might leave this just because it's got the lettuce and we are harvesting the lettuce. Um, but then like the cabbage, we don't have any heads in the cabbage yet. We don't have any Brussels sprouts over here. We do have cauliflower. Cauliflower isn't doing anything yet. It's so far out from having any heads on it. So right now, these are just taking up time and space for us. Now again, we could just leave these. We could just say, you know what, we'll wait and we'll put the tomatoes and the peppers somewhere else. But even if we leave these, it's getting warm and these things don't like heat. I told you we may try leaving the Brussels sprouts, but we're not leaving all of them. We're gonna leave one chunk of them to see what they do, to see if we can maybe take them through the summer. Cause we do actually get to harvest Brussels sprouts more than once. Um, so on one hand, they're, they're not as bad as some of the others, but they take longer to, to make anything. Um, so what I'm about to do is pull these plants and they won't be completely wasted. I'll feed them to the goats. So they'll have that purpose. Um, it's painful. It hurts to have to pull things back up once they're in the ground. Um, like I say, Brandon was like, you do it. I can't. I can't do it. And we've put off this decision for a long time. We've needed to get the peppers and tomatoes in the ground. And we kept thinking, okay, let's see if we could get some more ground cleared. Let's see what we can do. Because we didn't want to have to pull them. Um, the reverse of this, okay, if we pull them, we don't get to sell them. I mean, that's pretty basic economics right there. If we pull it, we don't get to sell it. Um, we're already looking at dropping our prices. Now, we're not looking at dropping our prices because we're just making more money than we can handle. Um, actually, markets have been significantly slower this year um, than in the past. So we're, we're kind of looking at doing a we'll scratch your back, you scratch our sort of deal. Uh, we know that the economy is kind of crummy right now and groceries are high and money is tight uh, for everybody. So what we're kind of looking at is what if we drop our our prices um, to kind of encourage some more people to come out and maybe try to sell an increased volume at a lower price versus less amounts of things at a higher price. Um, again, this is what we do. This is the job. Uh, there's six mouths to feed and we can't all live on broccoli and lettuce. Uh, so we have to go to the grocery store too. Um, and the shoes and the clothes and the electric bill and all the other things that, that every family has to cover. Um, economically, it doesn't make sense to lower our prices because that's, that's lowering our paycheck. Um, but like I say, we're trying to look at it as kind of a you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours sort of deal. We lower the prices, we maybe sell an increased volume. Um, that's all we can offer right now. Um, not everything is not everything is negative. We've got some things really looking good out here, but it doesn't do us any good to be able to harvest them if we can't sell them. So we've got kind of this economic pain over here where we've already put the seeds and the time and the money and the fertilizer and the things onto these crops that we're now going to feed to the goats. And then we've also got the thought of planting all the tomatoes and then we can't sell the tomatoes at the same price that we sold them at last year uh, just because we don't move this we don't move enough of them that way the money is is not there for the general um, community the community doesn't have the money to pay that for our product not that the product is less valuable this year but supply and demand we have the supply 
the only way for us to create a higher demand is to lower the prices. It's, it's economics. It's what it is. And so we have to look at all those angles too. So I'm about to start pulling. I know I'm going to start with cauliflower. I know I'm going to ditch the cauliflower. I know I'm going to ditch uh, part of the cabbage. I'm going to kind of study on the broccoli and decide what I'm doing with it. Um, cause we have to make decisions cause we've got tomatoes and peppers. The tomato plants didn't sell this year. I mean, normally we sell hundreds of tomato plants and we've only sold less than half of what we normally sell. So we've got all sorts of other different things that we're looking at too, as far as trying to decide what to keep where and what to plant and what to toss and so many decisions. So I'm going to start with the easy decisions. I'm going to pull the cauliflower and feed it to the goats. That's where I'm starting. All right, so there's two rows. Uh, this one was all cauliflower. This was about half cauliflower, half cabbage. Three wheelbarrows to the goats. Um, so it's not a total loss because they get to eat it, but that's not the plan. That was not the plan for what we should do with this. Um, each of these plants, if we had let them stay in the ground, would have brought between three and six dollars. And there's hundreds of plants there. Uh, so I say hundreds. Yeah, we're in the hundreds. At least two or three hundred plants. And they would have brought three to six dollars each if we had let them grow. And I'm not done pulling. But again, they are getting some use because the goats are getting to eat them. And you can see they're very happy about that. Okay, so I have freed up two full rows and two pieces of a row. So there was a row of cabbage and a row of broccoli that one end looked better than the other end. And I pulled the weaker end, the one with the smaller plants, I pulled those out. So I have all to go all together about two and a half rows available now for putting out tomatoes and peppers. Um, again, we have way more tomato plants than we normally plant because we didn't sell the plants this year as well as we normally do. Um, I don't know, like we, we tried discounts, we tried um, all sorts of different things and we haven't sold them as well. So now we have all the plants. So I think we're gonna put them out. Um, and then I think I'm also going to go ahead and pull that cilantro and pull the Brussels sprouts that are on the other end of the row past the cilantro. Um, and then I'll just have one chunk of Brussels sprouts left that we'll wait and watch and see what they do. I'll have the cilantro space and then I'll get some plants in the ground. Our uh, tractor is also down again. Uh, the We're having so much trouble with the hydraulics. Um, eventually we'll get it figured out. But right now I have to hand plant the tomatoes and peppers. So I'll get the kids to help me with that part in a little bit. Brandon's working on something in the shop. So um, I'll get them to help me with that part. But we do have some space freed up now that we can put some more plants in and reuse the space that I just tore out the plants. Okay, I said I was going to pull the cilantro and now I'm sitting here having an argument with myself on it. It's bolting. It's going to be di very difficult for us to harvest it at this point. I just love cilantro. <laughs> I like to eat it myself. Um, I know that it needs to come out. It's just the decision to actually start pulling the plants. So when I say it's bolting, it's got a big stalk coming off the top like this. Um, and that will flower at the very top later. But it still smells good. And it still tastes really good. Um, so it's just kind of hard to choose to pull it up. But I know this space will be better used for other things. Oh, you know what? It's getting tough. So that, that tells me it's time to go. That actually helps that it's tough because that makes it easier for me to make this decision. So out it comes and the goats will get to eat it too. All right, I've got everything pulled that needs to be pulled and now I'm starting to put out peppers. Um, so I am doing, I started with scorpion peppers. We bought our scorpion pepper plants this year uh, because we've had trouble getting the seeds started the last couple of years. Um, and I am very disappointed in these plants. I am, I've had them in the greenhouse for several weeks and they're not growing at all. So I'm, I put them out here. We'll see. Um, not a lot I can do about it now, but it's frustrating when you buy a plant and it just sits there and looks worse than it did when you bought it instead of better. Uh, so I've got those in and then the next thing I'm going to be doing is a mix of different kind of hot peppers. Um, I don't remember how many pepper plants we have, 
I don't know if they'll all fit in, but that's what I'm going to be doing for now. I am planting these peppers quite a bit closer together than they should be. Uh, my thought is with irrigation and hopefully soon a fertilizer pump that will allow us to pump uh, fertilizer to the plants through our irrigation system, we should be able to kind of push them a little bit and get them to still do pretty well for us even in a slightly crowded environment. I may be wrong on that. I feel like everything I'm doing this year in the garden uh, is somehow just having to learn all over again. Things are just, I don't know, out of order somehow this year. And I'm just having to kind of figure it all out as I go. Uh, but at the end, we will have some type of food to sell for all of our efforts. And that's kind of the best I can hope for right now. Biscuit, you cannot be in the garden. Go. Go. No. That one still has cilantro roots in the dirt. I have put out two flats of peppers already. Like I say, they're much closer together than you would normally put peppers. There are probably twice as many in this space than you would normally put out. Um, I am doing my best to make the best use of the space that I have for the plants that I have. Uh, I think I'm going to put... This next one that I have is a type of jalapeno. I think I'm going to finish this row and then do part of this row. This row has some squash in it. Um, this squash is um, three-ish weeks old, something like that. Can't remember for sure. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the peppers along that side of the row and that way the squash is still here and it's fine. And we'll probably be taking this squash out before long. We're not going to leave it all summer. Um, once our other squash starts producing, this will come out. So I won't be too worried about it crowding the peppers. I'm going to finish up planting these peppers. And then that's probably about all I'm going to get done for today. So I got all of those cold crops pulled and fed to the goats. And I've... So far I've planted three flats of peppers. I've got three more to go, so I'm starting my third one now. Um, I think the biggest frustration with this is just knowing that I threw money to the goats. Um, I mean, I might as well have just given them dollar bills to eat. These are calls that have to be made. We have to decide at some point which crop is gonna be more valuable. Um, going into the summer, Cold crops don't always do well. A lot of times when it gets hot, um, the flavor isn't right. They can be bitter. They can be tough. Um, sometimes they bloom. I have this fear. So a cabbage bloom, there's a cabbage. And basically, if I understand correctly, basically the bloom just like tunnels up through the middle of the cabbage. And so you have a cabbage with a hole and a bloom through the middle of it, if I'm understanding that correctly. I'm not interested in that at all. Uh, but broccoli will also bloom, so it'll make a tiny head and then just flower out. Um, the part of the broccoli you eat is the flower. We just harvest it before it opens. Um, but it'll open up into yellow flowers that are kind of pretty, but not as wonderful in a salad. Um, so we just had to make a choice. We had to decide which crop we were going to put more value on. And we chose 
the peppers and the tomatoes because we can harvest off of them longer. It's not one and done. It's the whole summer. And so that's that was just sort of our choice on that. Um, or our thought process on how to decide on that choice. Another farmer might do it a different way. Next year we might do it a different way. It all just completely depends on the year and the circumstances uh, as to what stays and what goes. This is the first time we've ever had to pull up that much of something to put something else in. That's why it was more of a like, hmm, don't make me do it kind of moment. Hopefully it pays off. Uh, the rest of these over here, the cabbage and broccoli and stuff that I left, are looking pretty good. And like I say, I did leave some over there. We may make a call on those later. We'll see. But that's what I've got going on for today. Um, that's our little economics lesson, lesson in the hard decisions that we have to make. Anyways, I hope y'all learned something today and enjoyed your visit to the farm. Be sure and come back when you can stay longer.